we're just going to narrate through some things I played offline. Um, this is a um, Demir list with Crypt Command. Um, my favorite, one of my favorite cards, if not my favorite card ever printed. Um, Crypt Command. Um, Crypt Command is playable in this meta. It just is. Um, and the reason because of that the reason crypto command is actually playable and you can win a lot with it right now is because uh, the one ring stalls games so does crypto command you're you're playing the same model for same uh with different effects the thing is is if you think about the 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 one ring as a card in itself what it does is it stalls. Crypt Command also stalls. The ring costs four mana. Crypt Command costs four mana. The ring draws one card that turn that it comes down is played. Crypt Command also draws one card the turn is played. Um, there's some more flexibility um, with Crypt Command of when you get to play it. It hits the stack differently. Obviously, it's not sorcery speed, um, but the old the old saying um, holds true here. And the saying the saying is is that if you have cryptic command in your hand and you have mana to cast it, you cannot lose the game on that turn. And the one ring is basically the same thing. Um, it's just slower and it gives you protection from everything. So, so from that regard, the car two cards are very similar, except for one thing, is Crypt Command counters the ring, um, inherently, because it can counter spells, and it can also bounce spells. So Crypt Command is, like, obviously has this functional workaround around the ring, um, and what the ring has done is push the format into a stall out mode and has lengthened games to where four mana spells are actually um, desired now uh, four mana four mana spells in in general are going to help you win the game and establish thing it was before the ring it was the three slot and uh, and now that's no longer the case um, the three slot means less now the four slot means everything. So Crypt Command has come into light. The fact that the uh, meta has shifted backwards to be slower and people are dropping these huge mana bombs to take care of the ring are inherent um, to the success of Crypt Command right now. Um, these are all reasons to play Crypt Command right now. Now, how many you play, that is your personal preference. Um... In this deck, I'm playing three, I believe. Maybe four. I think three. So you want to see it enough, but you don't want to see it in your opening hand all the time. Um, because it still is four mana and it's clunky. And some matchups, it just, you take it out. You know, it's just so simple. So anyway, that's my, uh, that's my kind of meta breakdown right now and why I'm doing what I'm doing. Um, so... But Crypt Command is playable, and it's desired right now in most in most matchups. You can you can really do a lot with it, um, and you'll see um, you'll see in these couple games um, of what it comes down to. All right, so we'll get we'll get to this just step by step narration here. All right, we. Uh, we start with a good hand. This is normal. So nothing nothing too crazy out of the box. So decent hand. Four land. We're land heavy, but we have we have plenty of things to do. We're reactionary. Um, with fatal push there. We draw a blossom here. Or we didn't draw the blossom, but we have a blossom threat as well. Um, this game this game is gonna really show us um, the power of Bitter Blossom and how we can just kind of go wide quickly. Um, 
So, but we also have a lot of other things. We have we have plenty of removal, plenty of interaction here. Here we just slam blossom. So there we go. So our, our opponent's on Boros, so we have to think. Um, you know, boom bust, burn. But we're probably not burn because he's he didn't play a one drop, or we're extremely lucky. He's also playing this coming to tap land. Which signifies that he's slower, more of a control, kind of a prison type burn, type burn or prison deck. Um, and then, and then for the rest of the game, we just get to be reactionary here. We we don't have to do anything extra. We don't have to, we don't have to tap out for anything at this point. And we drew into a cryptic command, which will happen when we get when we get our fourth land, of course. So. Um, the Dread Horde Arcanist, uh, this thing, if you let this thing hit and let it attack, it can do really bad things. And what they want to do is, they might even be playing, like, as we're told, and, like, um, a bunch of uh, suspend cards to be able to play them for free. So, so we just take care of that uh, immediately, and we do it mana efficiently. So here we go, and we, we go ahead and develop our board even more. So draw into a spell snare to be more mana efficient. So we're, we're pretty happy where we're at right here. So, and we, again, we just sit back and ride the wave. So we draw our fourth land. Um, Curse Command is online. We attack with everything. So he bolts our mastermind. We're fine to take that. We have a bit, act of bitter blossom going on. Uh, we don't really mind where he's at. Again, we just pass. Attack with bitter blossom tokens. So draw a fifth land, which is good. And he gives up because he's obviously stalled on two lands and. At this point, with an active Bitter Blossom with uh, five functional fairies on board, um, Spellstar Sprite is just a win more card at this point. And, you know, we you can do the math. So we beat them in three turns. And actually, we can. We're just holding up Borrower here. We don't even think about casting Borrower here, even if he does anything else, unless he casts like some crazy threat that we can't counter. So. Moving on to the next game. So this is this is the power of Bitter Blossom. Showing the power of Bitter Blossom when your opponent does not um, does not do anything for two turns. Bitter Blossom can take over the game quite easily. Alright. So here we are again. Um, game two of Boros, what we think is prison, but we we've seen that he's playing an Arcanist. Um, so we're gonna take we're taking a um, taking a risk here with this hand. This hand is only good because we have an opt. Um, you can argue that this should be a preordain. I'm playing opt. Um, I prefer opt. I prefer the instant speed stuff, but that is purely personal choice um, it could be a wrong choice but this is how I play the game so I choose to over over the course of time I found out the, the interaction of an instant speed cantrip is more impactful than the extra scry now that may change um, with the power level of modern and the power creep rising to a certain point it may turn out that pre or Preordain is actually the superior card because of the other cards around it are stronger. And we're at, maybe we have reached that power level where that extra scry actually means something more than what it used to. But for now, I'm playing Opt. So, And we're, we're going to take this uh, you know, one lander and we have a bunch of gas in our hand. And we're just going to let it fly. Let it go. So. So we land, land, he passes. And this is where it gets fun. And 
So we are, we're praying for it to see a land so we can put it in our hands so we can play it next turn. Cool. So we go ahead and do this. We grab an island to um, obviously he's probably on a blood moon path. Um, so we're going to combat that blood moon path with an island. And, uh, so, <sighs> so we are going to just slam Blossom. He's going to then slam a Blood Moon, so, as we predicted before. But we're not so worried about that because we have an active island here, even though we just drew a third land, which will become a mountain. So... So we're just going to ride this Bitter Blossom. We're pretty much shut out from um, doing anything constructive right now, or reactive. If he would play like some other bomb threat right now, we would have a de decently hard time dealing with it, especially if it costs four mana. Um, that's the only downside of the position. He chooses to do the Strike It Rich and then pass turn. So, and we're happy. We're happy to oblige him doing nothing. So, and the, the format's a little slower now. It's not, um, it's slowed up even more because of the One Ring. So people are trying to get away with these decks that they can play bigger mana costing th things and Blood Moons and uh, the mid game means more now than ever. So. so we're still in there. We can't cast half our hand. Um, so what we're trying to do here is because we can't really be reactionary in any other way, we can't uh, Sauron's Ransom at all, what we're trying to do is we're trying to be aggressive on board. And, you know, we're trying to be the aggressor in the, the <laughs> when we're not the aggressive deck, which is kind of, it's weird for the deck to play like that. But this is the power of Bitter Blossom, is... You can, within two turns of, if our opponent does nothing to satisfy, um, to stabilize the board state, we will take over the control in three or four turns and just, and take over the game. So, so we're just cast, we're casting to be aggressive here. So just keep building that, those tokens out, keep doing that. Yep. So, go. He tries to wrath. It's too late for him to wrath. He obviously just drew this and top decked it. Um, so, you know, our bitter blossom's too far ahead at this point. He can't come back. So, and this is what we're kind of looking for. And if they give us two turns off, we win the game. So that's all we're looking for is two turns off. So. Yep, do this. Now I can I can either opt or fairy mastermind. He chooses to concede because he um, he clearly has nothing going on. So his blood moon is blood mooning, hurting him probably more than it is us. Um, and he didn't draw the cards he needed to be a prison deck. Um, ghostly prison obviously hurts us a lot, but you know we do have ways around it. Um, so after. After seeing the Blood Moon play, we probably take out Cryptic Command. Probably one more. Uh, we don't want to see this. Obviously, this is impossible to cast. Um, pretty much, if he has a Blood Moon, active Blood Moon effect. So, anyway, that's it um, for this one. It's just a quick, uh, quick realization of the power of Bitter Blossom when our opponent does nothing. Um, when they do nothing, Bitter Blossom will take over the game, um, as it should. So anyway, just a short clip. Thanks. Have a good one.